How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about The Abandon from 2006, and this is part of the very first After Dark Horror Fest. Uh, this is directed by uh, Nacho Cord and stars Anastasia Hill and Carl Roden. And this is about an orphan from Russia who, over her life, eventually made her way to America, but she always wondered about her past, where she came from. One day, a lawyer reaches out to her and says, We found your family home. It's your inheritance. Come down to Russia and check it out. Now, she doesn't really care about the house or the money or anything like that. What she's coming down to do is find out what happened in her past and where she came from. She goes down there and she runs into her long-lost twin brother who has been there a little while longer than she has and it turns out they can't leave. Once they go to the house, the house will trap them and they can't get out and it's very, very haunted. This will include time manipulation. That's a pretty cool thing. There's a fun shot where she shines her flashlight around the house and it's all dirty and decayed, but the beam of her flashlight will show her what the house used to look like back when she was a child. Yeah, there's some cool stuff with the time, but in addition to that, they are being haunted by their double gangers. Dead versions of themselves are following them around and they have to stay away from them. That's a pretty cool concept. And overall, there's a fair bit in this movie to like, and I really wanted to like it, and I could tell that this movie, with just a little bit of work, could have been pretty good, but sadly, it just doesn't really pan out, and it turns into one of those, a bunch of atmosphere, but not really great characters and story, which is really sad, because if they had spent a little bit more time developing their characters, and if they had, you know, made a compelling mystery, and if they had, you know, defined what they need to do a little better, it let more happen in the movie, it could have been interesting. But it's, it's just really boring, because so much of this movie is just wandering around a haunted house. And I, I will say this, it's a classic haunted house thing, is character is going through a haunted house, usually with a flashlight, and they're investigating things and they're usually going to get a few little scares. Wandering around a house investigating can go one of two ways. You can either be there with the character, you could be in their shoes and you could be nervous about what's behind every little corner. It can go really great. The Conjuring does this really well. Sadly, wandering around a haunted house can also go very terribly they can quite easily go on way too long and you start to kinda space out and sadly a lot of the wandering around a haunted house in this movie is just monotonous going through dark quarters over and over with nothing really happening and you do start to space out it's sadly a very boring movie with a good sense of atmosphere that could have been something uh, another example uh, you have the atmosphere, but do you have the characters? No. Uh, your main lady, uh, she's 40-something. She's kind of sad. What else do we really know about her? Not much. She has a daughter, what she has, like, one phone conversation with. You don't really get to know this character too well. The character's boring, and she does make some dumb mistakes as the movie goes on, and it gets kind of frustrating. You have to give your character a likable personality and a like and an understandable goal, but she's just kind of there. And yeah, it's not really a standout character, and with such a limited cast, you really did need a standout may, uh, main character, but no, not here. But also the mystery, what's the, what's the plot about? Well, sadly, it's told to us way too early on that the dad stabbed the mom. So you don't really get a mystery as to, to what happened in the past, you know? It's told to us really early, 
but we don't really get to know the characters in the past either. We don't really get to know the dad. We don't really get to know the mom. We don't get to wonder about what happened. We don't get alternate scenarios. We don't get, you know, I bet this is going on. We don't get any of that because we're just told, you know, there's no red herrings, no false suspects, no false ideas. It's just told to us. So the whole mystery that should have been driving this plot is gone. No characters, no plot. Sadly, a lot of this is just wandering around the haunted house. And you get to wonder about things like, uh, why is there time travel? Why is there double gangers? Nah, you don't need to know. It's not explained. You don't know why this ghost is so powerful, why this house is so powerful. It doesn't tell you, you know, you need to have some sort of story. If it's just there, okay, sometimes sometimes having something unexplained works, but you have to, to wonder, and it's just the story is just super powerful haunted house with no additional substance. And there's other rules like, you know, why did it lure her back at 40? And there's this whole, oh no, at midnight we're gonna be doomed for some reason. And they do provide a little bit of explanation, but whenever they explain stuff, it's usually thin or stupid, and it's not all the time. In fact, sometimes when the movie explains things, uh, it's just the ghost telling you. The, the ghost is on screen way too much at the end. He's just kind of walking around like a regular person. That's not scary. It's just way too comfortable, you know? So... Yeah, there was something there. The time manipulation, the double gangers are really creepy looking. This is a movie that could have been something. It's just they didn't write enough story. They didn't build enough mystery. They didn't build enough characters. And in turn, it just gets really, really frustrating, you know? <sighs> yeah, I, I wish this was better. Sadly, this is definitely an After Dark Horror Fest B-side. Boring characters boring, next to no plot, just wandering around a haunted house with no sense of rules. I, I wish this was just a little bit better. I, I, I kind of notice this sometimes. There's some movies that if they were just a little bit better, would have been a whole lot better, and this is definitely one of them. So, sadly kind of boring, but whatever. There, there was an effort, there was some atmosphere, there's some cool ghosts. It just didn't pan out, and the movie definitely thinks it's cleverer than it is. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and talk a bit about the plot in a little bit more specifics. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, so I'll be avoiding how the movie ends, but I will analyze the plot in a little bit more detail. So, uh, we open up with a landscape shot of, I think it's just treetops, and the daughter speaking, talking about the mom was always trying to look into her past and I, I want to avoid it. And right off the bat, this is really disorienting because you think the character talking would be your main character who never met her mother, or at least not when she was old enough to remember, but it's actually her daughter talking who is, other than a phone call, not really in the movie. So we have opening narration that takes place at the end of the movie from a character that's not really in the movie. You see how this is a little disorienting, right? Anyway, after the boring narration, we then jump to the past. So this movie is going to go future, past, present, just to give you whiplash. But anyway, we then jump to the past and we see a woman driving up to this farmhouse. There's a a family eating dinner and it goes way too long but she drives up to this farmhouse they go to inspect it and they find that the mother's been stabbed and she has twin babies with her so they take the twin babies but the mother is dead and then we jump to the future and we find that one of the babies has grown up and she's in the present, and she had spent a lot of her time as an adult in America. She doesn't even speak Russian anymore. But she gets a call from this lawyer, and the lawyer says, We found your family home. Come to Russia. Why did they just find it out? I, I don't know. Well, it is kind of explained, but uh, she goes to Russia, and again, she doesn't care about the property. She just wants to know her story. 
and we find out a few things about her. You know, she's a little depressed, you know, her daughter and her are fighting about her boyfriend, and we also find out that she is a movie producer, which is a really interesting job, but it doesn't come up. Like, you think that you drop a job that big and interesting that it would play into the plot more later? But it really doesn't. You know, you could have done a fun opening shot where they're at the movie studio, and you could have had a bunch of meta references, you know, this is just like one of those ghost movies I produced. But this interesting job is just dropped and never talked about again. Uh, so, whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, they... She gets a rental truck, she finds some guy to drive her out to her house, and not everyone wants to do this because the house is supposedly haunted, and we also find out that there's a river surrounding the house, and our main character, for plot reasons, can't swim. Uh, guys, 70% of the Earth's covered with water. I would highly recommend taking swimming lessons if you don't know how. Uh, but she can't swim, so that will effectively trap her there. Uh, but an interesting note is the truck she's in is the same truck from the prologue that her mother died in, but she doesn't know this, which I found was a really good small detail. There are some really good small details in this. It just doesn't weave an intricate fabric. You know, it's just a bunch of random little details that don't mesh too well. But anyway, a nice interesting detail. Uh, but anyway... Uh, the guy gets out when they're close to the property and says, let me look around, make sure there's no wildlife. And of course, he takes a little bit too long and she gets out and explores on her own. And while she's out, the guy goes back to his truck, finds her not there and just leaves. Which, yeah, that's uh, not the smartest decision. I would have definitely just stayed in the car if he asked me to. But anyway, he's gone. She's stuck there, and I did find that this was almost like a bit of a Silent Hill setup. You know, she gets out of the car. Where did he go? And I almost expected that over-the-shoulder third-person camera. Time to go explore. But anyway, she explores the house a little bit, clearly haunted, and almost instantly falls in a river, her one weakness. And she wakes up. Uh, this man has saved her. What do you do when you almost drowned and someone clearly saved her? Pick up some firewood and smash him on the head. Like, this character wasn't already super likable. She was kind of boring. But taking her clear savior and just walloping him with some firewood, that made her really unlikable really quick. You know, you, you, she, he clearly saved you. Why did you just beat him up? But anyway, once she finally calms down, the guy explains that he's her twin brother. So this is the other baby from the beginning. He's been there longer, and he says the house will not let them leave. So it's haunted. And then you also find out that bits of the past are starting to invade, and that for whatever reason, doom will come at midnight. So, you know, a timer, that's okay, it's, yeah, like I said, explained really poorly when it finally does tell you, uh, but in addition to the time manipulation, there is, there are double gangers, which are a really cool visual and does lead to some of the best movie scares, but why are there double gangers? They just say, yeah, you see your double ganger before you die, so I guess in this movie's universe, everybody sees their double gang? I don't know. Like, it doesn't really explain why these two are there. I guess when you get time out of sync or something, I, I don't know. But yeah, the double gangers are just there. They're cool. No reason for them, but they're one of the movie's strongest things, so I guess don't question it. But anyway, after that, a lot of wandering around the house, and the brother, really early on, just drops that the, the dad stabbed the mom, she made it out, saved the babies, and it's just told to us really quickly what happened, so now there's no mystery, and I expected something more, you know, they're wandering around the basement, part of it's flooded, I thought they would discover something like, 
oh no, our dad had the Necronomicon or something, but no, there's no explanation as to why this house is so powerful, why the spirits in here are so powerful, they just are, and I really wish that this movie handled the plot better, but sadly it doesn't, so what you gonna do? But yeah, after that, boring boring sister and brother wandering around a haunted house with good atmosphere, but again, just wandering for way too long, and the movie has this, like, blue-green tint where you kind of feel like you're in the Matrix, and yeah, it, it was just kind of boring and kind of disappointing, and I... And it had, it had stuff, you know, time, double gangers, they just needed, you know, a reason, they needed more of a mystery, and they needed more interesting characters, it was just frustrating. But yeah, as it stands now, kind of boring, and I would really only recommend it for the people that are super into atmosphere, you know? Um, anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I hope I didn't rant too hard. Um, <laughs> this movie had something, you know? Anyway, um, I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my After Dark Horror Fest playlist. I think I've reviewed about half of the, the first Horror Fest so far, and then I have a few other things like um, Red Clover. Anyway... Have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon after Dark Horror Playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.